It's the National Football League on EA Sports, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons, and it's coming up next on Madden Football. Mere feeds from where the Georgia Dome stood and the Falcons played for a quarter century. We're looking at the team's home since the 2017 season. Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. So glad y'all could join us for this game. Kate Scott and Brock Hewitt on the call for it. And we're expecting quite a bit of offensive gamesmanship, partner. Some veteran savvy out there. Both of our starting quarterbacks have spent quite a long time in this league. And they've got plenty of experience to show for it. Yeah, I like the way you say that right there. Gamesmanship and veteran savvy. Father time. He chases down these skilled guys. It's a, it's a game that's getting younger and younger, right? Because, yeah, yeah. well, it's hard to be as fast as you've been when you were a rookie. As a quarterback, you've got to use your years of experience. Both these guys have to play this game from the neck up and still play it at a high level. Enough built up. The ball is teed up, and we are ready to go. And we're underway in Atlanta. Here's Avery Williams on the return. Coverage team gets him down at the 26-yard line. So out here the Falcons for their first possession. And leading them out in his 13th season out of Michigan State is Kirk Cousins. Well over a decade has started in this league, and Kirk Cousins put up some prolific numbers. The thing that's eluded him despite all the stats are those playoff opportunities and those marquee postseason victories. I think Kirk, his family, and everybody rooting for him hopes the final chapters of his career will contain some of those. All right, let's get this show on the road. It is first and ten. Quick touch pass to the receiver. And he found some running room for a nice game. It's a solid 70-yard pickup on first down. Now they're going to have second and three. Well, I know this. This staff loves the athleticism and versatility he brings to the offense. That's not only as a receiver, but as someone who can take occasional carries and turn them into good yards. They fake the handoff. Now Cousins. Nabbed by Kyle Pitts. And he takes this down after crossing the 45. It's a 13-yard play, and that's enough for the first. That wasn't going anywhere else on that play. It's one of the ones called specifically for the tight end because they know he's able to get a good release off that play action, and then he gets himself in space to do some damage. Throw reeled in by London. A solid gain there. Gets him across the 45 before he goes out. That's what you call efficiency. Exactly what you're looking for on first down. Textbook. It sets up second and very manageable, and then creates that space if you want to take a shot downfield. Nice spot here for the offense. It's second and one. They'll run it here with Bijan Robinson. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. I don't know about you, Kate, but he sure made getting that first down look really easy. A lot easier than it's supposed to be for that defense. And I think they'll hear about it when they get to the sidelines. New slated downs to approach here from the 40. First down throw for Cousins. Got a man over the middle. Complete. And he'll get this down at the 33-yard line. Second and three now. Here's Robinson up the middle. He finds space into the red zone. And he's in. It's an Atlanta touchdown. The Falcons take a 6-0 lead on their opening drive. It's a Bijan Robinson touchdown. 
So that right there, Brock, exactly what you want to start off a contest. Opening drives are such tone setters. You come out flat as a group, maybe go three and out. Sometimes there's a carryover effect, but here they were sharp, they were crisp, and they grabbed the early lead. Young Hui Ku on for the point after. That one right down the middle. And they add one on to their first touchdown of the contest. To kick it away, here's Pinion. Return coming from the six. He stopped on the return at the 27. So now we'll get a look at the other offense as the Saints take the field. Leading them out in year 11. He's played 15 or more games every season in the league. A real Iron Man, Derek Carr. One thing you can always trust about Carr is to give you a lot of games and a whole lot of numbers as a starter each and every season. He's just got a lightning quick release. I love watching him throw a football, but he's not gotten a lot of chances at postseason moments. In time, the time is not on his side. Offense ready to begin this drive. First and ten. Throwing his car. Short pass caught by his tight end. And that's good yardage there with a new set of downs to boot. You want to become a quarterback's best friend? Do that. Turn a short little gain, a short little pass into some yards after catch, and that quarterback will find you again. A jolt to start that drive. They're up near the 45-yard line. This is Alvin Kamara with it. And this one doesn't go far. Two on the pickup there, and it's going to be second and eight. I think one thing you learn, Kate, when you transition from college to the NFL, not every run is going to be a big play. Some of them, well, they're just destined to end in a minimal game, and some of them will set up that critical play action for later. Working out of the gun. It's Khan. And he just got it away before the hit, but the pass winds up incomplete. It's going to be third down. You know, that was a play, Kate, right there, where you need to buy your receivers just enough time to get open along their routes and your quarterback enough time to find and hit him with the throw. Time? Well, that's not what he had. O-line couldn't hold up, and it forces the incompletion. They bring a tight end in motion right. Carr throwing on third. Into the hands of Olave. And he pushes this down to the 42 before going down. They'll get 14 yards and a new set of downs. Those routes across the field become oh so dangerous the longer that play progresses. It gives him more time to get free. Wiggle away from that man-to-man -man coverage. And with enough time, it's almost inevitable he'll find enough space for a completion. They'll head up first and 10 from the 42. Car here from the gun. Olave with the catch. And he gets it down to the 35 before stepping out. I know I could sound like a broken record when I talk about timing and getting the ball out on time and on rhythm, but these outcuts, it is so imperative, and the best of them make it look oh so easy. Second and three now. Putting the tight end in motion. Going again, it's Carr. That one's complete right side. And they haul him down just a foot or two shy of the red zone. They gain 14 on the play. And the Saints are going to have a first down. Well, he saw his guys pick up the blitz. Well, he felt them pick it up anyway if he wasn't looking at them. But with their effort on his behalf, I think this QB felt owed to them. And the group up front to find somebody to get a completion so that effort up front wasn't in vain. Didn't get that one off in time. This is going to be a delay of game.
Must have lost sight of the play clock there, Brock, because the quarterback could have snapped it in time, but instead, they take the penalty. So they should be a little prompter in snapping this, you'd hope, Brock, after that delay of game. And the receiver's going to take this one on the jet sweep. And he's able to get this down to the 13. It just feels like any time this guy touches the ball, it's a big play waiting to happen. He could be lined up wide or when they use him as a runner. If someone doesn't get a hand on him quick, he's gone. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. From the shotgun, Cobb. This one's caught. And he'll get them enough for a first down. Look up contested catch in the football dictionary, and you'll see that. I mean, I can't critique the defense there. They're in the hip pocket of that tight end. But these contested catches, these tight ends that can separate with their hands, utilize their body, even when you're covered, you're not. They'll run with Kamara. And he won't salvage that. It's a loss on the play. So that's one quarter gone in a battle of NFC South rivals. Neither side separating much so far. We'll make our return to Mercedes-Benz Stadium after this. We're back for the second quarter. Saints in possession of the football. They're hoping to convert here on second and goal. Running behind center with Kamara. And he'll take this only to about the 11 before going down. Just two yards there on second and goal, and still a ways to go now on third. Well, you get a little bit closer, but you can feel the pressure starting to mount. Unless you're committed to playing four downs here, this becomes a critical third down call. Third and goal, here's Carr. Too much on that, and it sails through the end zone, incomplete. QBs, well, they're a lot like the great shooters in the NBA. Hey, listen, sometimes you're going to miss. You just got to shake it off and keep shooting away. On fourth down, out comes the Saints field goal team and Blake Groupie. This from 28 yards away. And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And it's dropped back down now to a four-point game. Well, that's the type of long, sustained drive that takes some of the starch out of your opponent. The only negative is that the kicking team was out there for a field goal and not an extra point. But they do come away with three. We've got a good one here. They've cut the lead to four as they send it away. He fields it from the eight. He stopped on the return at the 27. The Falcons taking the field for their second drive. And so far, they've executed exactly how they drew it up, Brock. Early lead, no points allowed, and a chance now to seize control of the game on their second possession. And, Kate, generally, offenses love to script their first 10 to 15 plays. Well, this entire game script is playing out just the way they want to. They'll get this drive started. First and 10. Working from the gun, it's Cousins. We'll just huck this one into row C, and some lucky fan is going to haul in a heck of a souvenir. That is a DB's best friend, pressure. That pressure earned that incompletion. They came in before he could find a target and hit him to alter that last second attempt to get rid of it. Couldn't connect on first, it's second down. Shotgun snap now to Cousins. No hesitation and that one's caught. And this one gets to the 33 yard line before it stopped. The goal of that little drag route is to get him for at least a minimal gain with space to add after that. That picked up a good chunk, and it was nearly a big play. Chance to move the chains here on third and four. Out of the gun, Cousins. Short pass caught by his tight end. And he's going to go down right along the midfield stripe. 
That play good for 17 and a first down. From a great throw to a nice route and catch to moving the chains, there wasn't a whole lot not to like about that amazing play. He brings the offense up now for a first and ten. Now Cousins again. Into a ton of traffic, and this one's intercepted. Willie Gay with the pick. And the Saints bring it all the way back inside the red zone before he's finally hauled down. Oh, coaches just love that effort right there. Instantly, as he made the pick, everybody was looking for a block and doing their part to set up the return. And I know it pales in comparison to giving up the turnover, but how about the effort on the other side to track him down and stop a potential pick six? I think everybody deserves a little credit on the field for that effort. This New Orleans offense ready up for its second drive of the contest. And that interception has set them up beautifully inside the red zone. Drive starts out with a first and ten. Blitz coming, Carr. This is reeled in by Camara. And they've got him behind the line for a big loss. Well, there was never a play in any playbook I ever saw designed for a lost yardage play when you throw the ball. But if there's any solace, at least it was first down. A couple more chances to make up for it. Offense to the line for second down. Throwing with a blitz on the way. Falcons getting close, and they take it down. And that pushes them back. Third down coming up. That sure ended up being a worst-case scenario. Pass rush just kept coming and coming and bearing down. And he was looking for an escape that wasn't there. It's one of those plays in hindsight, Kate, where you really got to understand, I got to cut bait, cut my losses, and avoid such a negative play. So not an enviable spot here as they come up on third and very long. Carr setting the throw. Did not like what he was seeing, Brock, and he just hurls this one away. You know, it's a point of emphasis in practice each and every week, no matter where we go. How are we going to attack the coverage on third down? And it shows the wrong play off that call sheet that time. On fourth down, out comes the Saints field goal team and Blake Groupie. He was good on his first kick. Going to need to hit this one well to go two for two. And this kick is good. He needed to get all of it there, and he did. And that cuts the lead back down to a lone point. Okay, one of the areas that kickers and quarterbacks are similar, they want to get into rhythm. And no better way to feel good and get into that rhythm and start a game two for two as a kicker. Things trimmed back down to a single point, Brock, as they send this off and away. Has this at the six. And pretty solid field position starting out here, Brock. He's tackled at the 29. Here's the Falcon offense headed out. They are coming off their first interception of the game. This drive now a chance to rebuild some confidence. They're out and set, first and ten. Looking to throw here and shake off that previous INT. That's brought in by Mooney. And he'll push this upfield and earn them a new set of downs. Well, they sure found the right route at the right time to hit the soft spot in that coverage. And that slant, it goes for big yardage. New slate of downs to approach here from the 40. On first and ten, it's Cousins. Tight end reels in the shallow throw. 
And he'll be brought down a step or two shy of midfield. They're going to mark him at the 48. Quarterbacks will look for their tight end short in just about any situation. They take away the deeper options. Well, there's their consistent source of positive yardage, the trusty tight end. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. Play action now for Cousins. They'll get this complete to Rooney. And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. Give him 32 on that play. And it's good for an Atlanta first down. I think my favorite part was the magic he worked after the catch. The way he took the completion and made so much more out of it by adding all the extra yardage. Now they'll hit the line just outside the red zone following that big play. First down throw for Cousins. The throw is caught. And he goes down, so they're set up with a nice first and goal as we've reached our two-minute warning. From the red zone now. Oh, that's a tough one. Couldn't bring in the touchdown clean. It falls incomplete. It's going to be second down. Oh, that is, oh, that is such a bummer. A dropped touchdown right in the end zone. We're going to see how quickly he can flush this one. He better because they got to make an impact later. To the air, Cousins. And that one's behind him. That's incomplete. Looking for his wide receiver there. And now it'll be third and goal. Well covered on that play. Really not a large window for him to sneak that throw in. They've held him out twice. Here we go. Third and goal. Back to throw. Cousins. <laughs> And he just gets rid of this one, but unfortunately, that means fourth down coming up. This is why we hear about closing speed so often when you evaluate players. You know, once he senses the pressure, he's getting rid of that ball. It takes a player who can close quickly to get to him before it's released and alter that throw. And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And that'll push their lead to four. In that close, in the red zone, you know they're upset. They couldn't finish the drive with a touchdown. It's only half the points, but at least there's something to show for the possession. To kick it away, here's Pinion. To return this, Rashid Shahid. Coverage team gets him down at the 26-yard line. The New Orleans offense set to go now. And they'll have a little momentum as they take the field here after their kicker drilled a deep one to end their last drive with points. And the drive will start out with a first and ten. Working out of the gun. It's Carr. Rifles it, and it's caught. And he reaches the 35 before going out. When there's heat, that blitz coming off the snap, that QB's eyes, you could see it right away. He got to his check down in a hurry. But, Kate, here's the key. Quarterback and running back have to be on the same page. The two were right there, and then netted some positive yards. Second and one. Ooh, he misfired on that one. It's behind his man. No luck finding his receiver that time. So now they have third and short. Hey, Kate, I know it's unrealistic to expect a 100% completion rate from anywhere on the field. But in this close, you really shouldn't be missing too many throws. Those need to be borderline automatic.
Looking to throw on third and one. Kamara's got it. And he's out of bounds just past, looks like, the 40-yard line. Six yards on the play and enough for a first. Hey, Kate, they don't rightly care who it's going to go to in that situation. All they really care about are the results on third down. And that's exactly the result they needed, enough to keep this drive moving. Throwing again, it's Carr. Here's a throw on the out route, complete. So after that completion, we've got a player in some visible discomfort. And here come the trainers to get him some help. Let's see how they attack this first down, Brock, from the 43. From the shotgun, Carr. He finds Johnson. And this one's worked down to the 33 before being stopped. That can be a hopeless feeling when you fire a curl route right into zone coverage perfectly like that. Unless that curl happens to be right next to where one of your guys is sitting, that pass can hum in there, and there's nothing this defense can do. Let's see what they want to do here, partner. It's second and inches. Car here from the gun. That's complete to Camaro. And he's down inside the red zone before hitting the deck. The Saints calling for a timeout. They're first. They'll have two left to work with before halftime. They'll come up first and ten. Working inside the red zone. Almost had six, but can't find him in the end zone. Incomplete. Just something off in the rhythm of the passing game on that one, Kate. Time to recalibrate and keep throwing it to get back on track. No dice on that prior pass. Here's second down. Motioning one of the tight ends. Back to the air. Carr. And the cover just too good there. Didn't find the throw that he was confident in, so just throws it away. Third down coming up. Toward the sideline, and he's got it. Impressive play, but they are well shy of the first down. The Falcons spend the first of their three timeouts. They'll have two left to work with before halftime. On fourth down, out comes the Saints field goal team and Blake Groupie. This only a chip shot from the right hash. And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And that cuts the lead back down to a lone point. Give him the first half trifecta. He's three for three on field goals. And as much as they'd like six points, say, in drives, not three, they can at least be happy they're getting consistent looks inside field goal range, and he's delivering. Things trim back down to a single point, Brock, as they send this off and away. On the return, here's Ray Ray McLeod. Coverage team gets him down to the 26-yard line. The Falcons offense returning to the field a final time before the half. And clinging to this one-point lead, Brock, probably don't want to risk too much here.
A little less than 30 seconds to go as they begin this drive. First and 10, here's Cousins. He's got London left side. And that's good yardage with a new set of downs. First down now, ball at the 39-yard line. Shotgun snap now to Cousins. It's into the hands of Mooney. He picks up 15 on the play. And the Falcons will have a first. They've run this 12-yard out. Now we have a stoppage. No challenges inside of two minutes and a half, but the replay official wants to take another look at this on their own. Well, we're going to see how much of a sideline maven he is, Brock. This one very close, whether he got the feet down or not. And I'm so impressed by all these mavens because you've got to make that <laughs> transition from college where one foot, you're yep. good. Yep. But not at this level. You've got to be a ballerina. You've got to get those toes both in, and the replay booth will be the judge of it. So the officials looked at it twice. The replay officials in New York agreed, and the call on the field's going to stand. New set of downs for him from the 46. They fake the handoff. Now Cousins. He fires one deep down the right sideline. Incomplete pass, and we're down at 12 seconds remaining. I think if you look up in phase in the defensive encyclopedia, that is a picture-perfect form of it. He was all over him in coverage, really forcing the incompletion. So after the incompletion, here comes the second down call. Now Cousins again. That's brought in by Mooney. And he's brought down at about that 27-yard line. Now just before the break, a timeout taken by the offense. And they can try for some points going into the break. Only time left for one more snap, Brock, so they're going to run out their field goal unit. There's a 44-yard look from the right hash. And that one is good. A little longer, but no problem at all. And that'll push their lead to four. Inspiring a bunch of confidence in himself right there, Kate. Second time they brought him out for a field goal, and second time he's knocked it right through. Trust is earned in a number of different ways on the field. That's the best way to gain it as a kicker. Brock Martin, the touchback. This kickoff should run out the half, so better make that return good as it's away. And he opts not to bring this one out, so they're going to enjoy some good starting field position from the 30. All right, this is going to be the play that takes us to halftime. Looking to throw. He's going to lob one deep down the left side. A lot of guys there, and it's intercepted. Jesse Bates into pick it off. That's the end of two in Atlanta. The Falcons really spreading their wings. They're out in front so far. Now we'll get you down to our Orlando studios for the EA Sports Halftime Report with Jonathan Coachman. All right, Kate, thanks very much. Back to you and Brock in a bit. But first, time for our EA Sports Halftime report. It was a former Longhorn, Bijan Robinson, who was tough to stop in that first half. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. As always, a hat tip to coach for his hard work during the break, as we're happy to welcome y'all back to the start of our third quarter. to kick it away. Here's Pinion. 
This one's fielded at the four-yard line. And in the end, he's able to get it to what used to be a touchback. It's at the 25 after the return. The Saints offense ready to start this third quarter. You know, trying to get that ground game established better than they did in the opening half, Bronx. See if they can attack that deficit. Offense ready to begin this drive. First and ten. They go play action with Kong. Big catch is made, and he got the feet in, too. That play gains 15, and it moves the sticks. Kate, when you watch the combine, you'll watch guys try to make this throw. And without chemistry, it's so hard to execute. That was picture perfect. That's a QB and receiver on the same page because that route, that deep out to the field, that takes a, just a different level of connectedness. From the 39 now, after that explosive start to this drive. Kamara now on first and 10. You know you love some of my buzzwords, kid. I know you do. And this one, this one was about will power. He got to rock a long way from the chains and put his teammates on his back for a heck of a run. And great try at that first down. In a good spot here, second and inches. Car off the play fake. Short pass caught by his tight end. Just a couple of yards here as he heads for the sideline. Three yards there and enough to move the chains. There's no question the greatest concern there was just getting the first down. You want a high percentage throw and you're not really concerned about big yards. Well, the drag route was perfect. He comes open the short field. It's easy to zip that throw right in there and reset those chains. Car now on first and ten. Quick hitter complete. And he's going to be drugged down, looks like, at that 37-yard line. And that one goes for a gain of 11. And that's good for a New Orleans first down. Kate, when Bill Walsh was implementing the drag route with the 49ers in the 80s, it sounded the same way as it did with Mike Holmgren and me with the Seahawks in the 2000s versus man on the drag route run away. You see zone coverage, settle down, give your quarterback his numbers, and you can find a completion just like that. Oh, not much time to adjust, but he catches it still off the tip. And he runs this to the 25 before being brought down. It's a gain of 12 there. And the Saints are going to have a first down. That is so difficult to do with so much traffic. You're going to see a short pass gets tipped, and you really don't have much time other than to just react and make the catch. Exactly what he does. They run it from the gun with Camara. And he's caught behind the line for a loss. I talked to a bunch of different GMs, Kate, especially around draft time, and they all say the same thing. Linebackers are so hard to find. It's hard to transition from the college game that's in so much space to this game where you've got to play in a phone booth yet, have that explosiveness to chase a play on the outside down like that linebacker just did. Motion man sent left. Here's second and 11. Gets this one to Shaheed. And they have this well into the red zone now at the 15. Now after making that catch, we see he's shaken up. Trainer's heading out to take a look. One yard, all that's needed. This is third and inches. Working out of the gun. It's Carr. Connects with Johnson. And that short gain is enough for a new set of downs. You know, Kate, they say a dog is a man's best friend. A tight end that moves the chains on third down, that's a QB's best friend. They are now set for first and ten. It's a sweep. He pops the pass forward. And he scampers ahead and gets two on the carry. 
You know, when receivers have room to operate, that's a play that can totally gash a defense. The K, when you get down here in the red zone, it becomes so much tougher because you have a whole lot less space. And in fact, you'll see defenses swarm like that one just did. Eight yards to go. Let's see how they approach this second down. Kamara running out of the gun. And he's short of the first after a mild game. It's a four-yard pickup, and they need the same now here on third down. You know, that's a good run right there to keep the offense on schedule. If he can average that type of yards per carry, this guy's going to be more than all right with letting him lead the show. Third and four coming up now. Carr setting the throw. Got it. And he's brought down real close to that goal line at the one. They find seven yards, and now they've got first and goal. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. The Saints take the lead right away in half number two. Derek Carr with the touchdown. They broke out the design run for him there. Coach just tells him, hey, Brock, hey, QB, do your thing. Get a six. Yeah, and these offensive coaches love this play, and defensive coaches hate it, Kate, because it really gives you an extra hat, right, an extra yeah. number when your QB's got the athleticism, got the legs, got the instincts to go run it in for six. A defensive nightmare, an offensive touchdown. That one splits the uprights. And they'll continue adding to their lead. is the Saints kickoff team to tee it up and send it away. Return coming from the six. And a decent return ends as they bring him down inside the 30. Out of the field runs the Atlanta offense. They find themselves trailing after the opening drive touchdown and heck, it really set up to be an entertaining second half if they're able to answer here. They'll get this drive started, first and 10. Drive begins with a run, it's Robinson. And he found some running room for a nice game. Just a little short, but still a nine yard pickup. That's gonna bring up second and one. Okay, this is why coaches across all levels of football harp on the importance of good fundamental tackling, not just to hear themselves talk. Uh-uh, it's to make sure that when one of their guys has a chance to bring down a running back, they're able to do it and keep those plays from going any further. On second down, Robinson. And his short game gets them a new set of downs. You know what I love about that play call? It was simple. Nobody overthinking on the sideline or out on the field, just an offense going to work and moving those chains. New set of downs for him at the 38. On first and ten, it's Cousins. Throw wheeled in by London. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big gain and a new set of downs. So we hit the end of the third quarter. It's Falcons football, a nice little help for them as they trail entering the quarter. First down now, ball at the 39-yard line. Out of the gun, Cousins. He makes the catch. And they will score. It's an Atlanta touchdown. 
The Falcons take a fourth quarter lead. So that, Brock, an important score here as they move out in front. This is the time of the game where your legs just get a little bit tired. But that was a determined-looking drive right there. They were not going to be denied, and they're able to score and take the lead. Now a try to go up by four. Put it out of the range of a field goal. That one right down the middle. And they'll continue adding to their lead. To kick it away, here's Pinion. Has this at the six. And he's going to make this to the 28 before going down. New Orleans back on offense and ready to go now. They really had the passing game clicking on that last touchdown drive, partner. We'll see if they stick with that or if they mix things up a bit on this series. Drive starts out with a first and ten. From the shotgun, Khan. Into the hands of Olave. And he's up to the 35-yard line as they reel him in. The goal of running that drag route is to get it to him for at least a minimal gain with space to add after that. They picked up a good chunk, and there was nearly room to add even more. Second and three now. Car here from the gun. That's complete to Camaro. And he's brought down after a nice gain and a first down. This running back is a mismatch maker. <laughs> That's how I label him on my little sheet right here. Right under his bio, this guy just creates matchup nightmares for every defender on the field. Football on that 47 yard line, first down. Car. No hesitation, and that one's caught. And he'll have it down to the 44-yard line. Okay, one thing I learned from the late great Mike Leach is, yeah, the system was called air raid, but it wasn't just attacking downfield. His philosophy, and it played out right there, is you have to attack every inch of the field, both vertically and horizontally, without routes or in routes just like that. And the play clock hits zero. This is going to be delay a game. Everyone was set and at the line. The quarterback just didn't snap it before the play clock hits zero. Everyone's prepped. It's second down now. They'll run here following the penalty. And he gets it through the midfield stripe and onto the Falcons' side of the field. Two yards on the pickup, and that leaves him with third down and three. Throwing his car. It was there, but he couldn't hang on. That's incomplete. Not on the same page with his tight end. And that will bring up fourth and three. You know, quarterback's going to count on 99 of 100 times completing that short, simple route to a tight end. But even the shortest and simplest of throws will find a drop at some point, too. Punt team is on now, and they get this away. And they bring him down to put a stop to that return. 
The Falcons and Kirk Cousins headed back out to the field now. And he'll be happy to keep letting it fly as much as he has all game. Look at these numbers. They show just how effective he's been in captaining this offense. They're out and set. First and ten. Working from the gun, it's Cousins. Got a man, it's London. And he touched him down, but a great pickup, and it's good for a first. I know the combine tries to test everything it possibly can physically, but I don't know how you test courage at the combine, because there's nobody defending you. Nobody wants to hit you. But that was the epitome of courage to make that in cut and make the catch. Play action now for Cousins. Taking a deep shot here. Defender arrives right as the ball does, and the hit knocks it free. Incomplete. Hit arrived as the ball did to break things up. So second down coming up. You know, he's not going to be happy the catch was almost made, but he's going to be thrilled that he broke it up. Gives him a chance to do a little jawing after the play. Let that other guy know he just roughed him up and lost a big catch. is incomplete. Couldn't hang on through the contact. You know, that was almost a nice chunk play before he was able to recover and provide the hit that dislodges the football. You like to see that physical edge and scrappiness to contest any kind of shot plays deep. So after that prior incompletion, we've got third down. Back to throw it. He had it for a moment, but a great defensive play to jar it loose. Incomplete. I think that was a throw, Kate, that just came a little bit too late. What it did is it gave that defense time to come up and deliver a pop and knock the ball loose before he could secure it fully. So with the Falcons set to punt on fourth, on comes Bradley Pinion. Starts his return from the 23. And they bring him down to put a stop to that return. And that punt gets up to 59 yards. And the Saints will get set to take over. And the drive will start out with a first and ten. Pistol snap to Carr. And the catch is made down the right sideline. And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. They get 22 on that one. And that's good for a New Orleans first down. Well, that's a gain that has its roots in preparation during the week. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday kind of stuff. Identifying ways to target the coverage and creating opportunities for big completions. One play in, and already they're close to midfield. Play clock down to zero, and the flags come out. Must have lost sight of the play clock there, Brock, because the quarterback could have snapped it in time, but instead, they take the penalty. They'll have to come up with five extra yards now after that first down flat. Now Carr. Working across the field, complete. And he will score. It's a New Orleans touchdown. The Saints take a fourth quarter lead. I love plays like this, Brock. Sometimes you just got to ask your dude, show me what you got, man. Show off those wheels, and he did just that. Yeah, beauty in simplicity, right? Yep. Now, when you run that fly route, <laughs> you got to win right from the jump. Uh -huh. And you got to protect yourself from the sideline, too. Don't get pushed to the boundary. Give your quarterback room to throw it up, and you can find pay dirt.
Pretty important PAT here, Brock, to make it a field goal game. That one splits the uprights. And they'll continue adding to their lead. is the Saints kickoff team to tee it up and send it away. Return coming from the six. He stopped on the return at the 27. Here's Atlanta ready to take over possession. And they'll try for better results this time around, Brock, after they had to punt it away last time out. Offense ready to begin this drive, first and ten. Shotgun snap now to Cousins. He's got London, left side. And he'll get it up near the 38-yard line before going down. That's an 11-yard pickup, and it gives them the first down. As a quarterback, when you throw that curl route, you know it's a tight window, Kate. But the minute that DB turns and can't react to the throw, you put it right on your receiver's numbers. He comes back and gets it and moves the sticks. First and ten. Here's Cousins. Quick hitter complete. And he gets forward for three yards as we reach our two-minute warning. Second down now, seven to go. To throw. This one is tipped away and incomplete. Good positioning to make a play on it. That forces third down. You know, as a QB, I'm going to note that in the back of my head. That was a heck of a break. Knocks the ball away. DBs like that, they tend to, once they get one hand on the ball, have a pretty good beat on you and can get two hands on it the next time. Throwing now. He has the first over the middle. And he'll pick up enough to move the chains. You know, Kate, over the years, I've heard defensive coordinators say, hey, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. You got to earn the right for me to call blitzes. And when you call a blitz and you don't get home and you don't hit the quarterback, you've earned nothing. First and 10 from a yard shy of midfield. Here he is to throw. Into the hands of Pitts. And he'll have it down to the 44-yard line. There's no route on the old proverbial route tree, Kate, that takes more trust than throwing an out route. You're throwing it to a spot and believing your guy can get there. Clock working against him here as they hurry to that line. Looking to throw it. Play didn't break how they wanted it, and he throws this away. You know, in the NFL, offensive-minded teams will call it a perfect Friday. They don't want the ball to hit the ground once. And especially on these short to intermediate throws, you've got to count on those being efficient and effective. Last pass unsuccessful, and they have third down here. Now to throw. He finds his target, Robinson. And they get there to take him down right around the 41. Two timeouts remaining and some time left to use them. It's first and ten. Back to throw. They'll get this out right side. Complete. And he pushes this down to the 22-yard line. That'll go for an 18-yard gain. And it's good for an Atlanta first down. Yeah, these end cuts maybe aren't the hardest throws from a degree of difficulty, Kate. But it does take some courage as a quarterback to throw into congested spaces, but it can pay big dividends. Splits a couple of defenders and completes it. Timeout called by Atlanta. That's going to be at second. 
Still one more in their pocket to use. Halfway to the marker. It's second and five. Robinson on the inside give. And not much for him there. He's down to the 15-yard line. Now the offense going to take its third and final timeout. And now they're powerless to stop that clock with a timeout at least. All plays on the table here for third and three. Staying with Robinson. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. They say about great outfielders in baseball, there's just something to them. They've got a knack, a feel, an instinct to take the right line, the right angle. For safeties to create tackles for loss in the run game, it's the exact same attribute and skill set. Got to take that right angle and then go finish that runner. So a timeout's taken. Just five seconds left. And after the pause, we're going to see our last play of the game. Young Hui Ku out for the field goal. Pressure hanging over this kick. It's from the left hash, 33 yards. Looking good, and it's through. And in the final moments, they force overtime. So many of these players on the field, Kate, they just strive for consistency, but not the kickers. They strive for perfection, and so far, he's just that. To kick it away, here's Pinion. And he opts not to bring this one out, so they're going to enjoy some good starting field position from the 30. They'll get this drive started. First and 10. Setting up to pass. He's going to loft one deep to the left. An alert play defensively there. He got a hand on it to tip it away, and that makes it second down. That's going to do it for regulation, so some bonus football in store for all those fans in the stands. We're headed for overtime. And hopefully this conclusion will be just as exciting as our opening four quarters. The kick is away here in overtime. Fielded at the seven. And a decent return ends as they bring him down inside the 30. The Saints come marching onto the field. Drive starts out with a first and ten. Running back sent in motion left. And that catch is made down the right sideline. Great effort there. Big gain, 14 on the play. And the Saints are going to have a first down. 
That's just a gorgeous corner route by the wide receiver. I bet you a fine, Kate. In the annals of football history, the best corner route runners as receivers are also the best slant runners, the best post runners, because it's all about change of direction, and that was put on display right there. Car now on first and ten. Short pass caught by his tight end. And he'll be brought down a step or two shy of midfield. They're going to mark him at the 48. Sometimes when you're just looking to move it forward, get some small yards on the throw, quarterback's best friend, security blanket. And when it's a big old tight end, that's an extra bonus. After a good pickup, they've got second and four. From the 48. He throws a bullet deep to the... Oh, big interception here. That's Justin Simmons. And the Falcons surprise them with the interception and now have a chance to win this game. You want that ball first in OT, Brock. You get the chance to control your own destiny. But what a stunning turn of events now as that interception gives this team a chance to win it all right here. That just can't happen. I mean, offensively, that just can't happen. But defensively, I know exactly what those defenders are saying as they're running off the field. Okay, now's your time. Go finish this pick, go win this game, and let's go celebrate in that locker room. Ball at the 33 for first down. Now he gets a shot here in overtime. Defender arrives right as the ball does, and the hit knocks it free. Incomplete. Tough one to retain through that hit. So it'll be second down. As a defense, you got to see the pass. You got to time up your hit, and you got to jar that ball loose. Not a lot of offensive players are hanging on to that one through a well-placed hit. Throwing again on second and ten. Cousins. Got a man over the middle. Complete. Decent gain here, but short of the first. And the Saints go in nickel. Third down. Out of the gun, Cousins. Complete beyond the marker. And he'll be brought down a step or two shy in midfield. They're going to mark him at the 48. He manages a gain of eight there. And the Falcons will have a first. Now Cousins again. That one's complete to London. And this is marked down right along that 40-yard line. Pickup of 12 on that play. And it's good for an Atlanta first down. The smartest pass catchers I've ever been around, they know how to set up an outcut beautifully. They recognize when they have leverage, how to sell the deep route, and then boom, they just break it out as if it's nothing. First and 10, a run to Robinson. And he's brought down after a tremendous effort just to get a couple of yards. He gets a couple on first, and they'll come up second and eight. Tight end going in motion here. Second and eight. Tight end reels in the shallow throw. And he runs this to the 25 before being brought down. A nice gain of 13 yards as it brings up a first down. Sure nice to see them looking for their tight ends in the passing game. Such great size to have out there. It really forces defenses to try to find a way to defend them along with everybody else. First down throw for Cousins. Parlay the interception into points. Drake London with the touchdown. 
I think we actually saw him call it early there, Brock. He made that throw, and then he signaled it was going to be a touchdown, like a guy calling it before his three-pointer goes through the net. Oh, you mean like Larry Legend Bird Ooh. in the three-point shooting contest in the 80s? Well, maybe like a Tyrese you... Maxx. Yeah. But what well, I, the kids weren't alive, I get it. Yeah, they weren't <laughs> alive in the 80s. They didn't see Larry Legend do it, but he did, and he anticipated just like the quarterback. So the Falcons defend their building and take the win at home. And it took some extra effort, Brock, some bonus football before they were finally able to separate from the opposition and earn that hard-fought victory. So for Brock Heward, everyone here on Our Great Crew, I'm Kate Scott, and this has been the NFL on EA Sports. A well-earned win for the Falcons as we say goodbye from Atlanta. Oh!